Well, and it is time for Family First. Uh, Lauren Zenzi joining us here to talk about the 100 deadly days of summer. Lauren, good morning. Good morning to you both. Yeah, it's time for today's Family First. Now, we are still in what is known as the 100 deadliest days of summer. Now that school is out, teens are out on the roads longer and later, so it's important that we have a conversation about keeping you and your children safe and covered. Insurance is extremely important. And in fact, in all 50 states, um, in some sort of insurance for your automobile is required. Connecticut state law requires $25,000 of bodily injury coverage per person, $50,000 per accident for bodily injury, and $25,000 per accident for property damage. But is that enough? You will have no coverage if your vehicle is stolen, if your vehicle is damaged in a storm, if your vehicle is damaged in smoke, um, as well as no, uh, no coverage if someone hits you and they don't have insurance. The short answer is no, which is why it's so important to stay in the know about getting the right insurance for your new driver, but also yourself. You're expecting a 250% increase in premium. So managing expectations, it's gonna cost you. So what is the best option for adding a new driver to your policy? Let's break it up into quadrants. First, bodily injury, which covers anyone who may need any sort of medical attention involved in the crash. Next is coverage against an uninsured motorist. So if someone doesn't have insurance and crashes into you or your teen, you are still covered regardless. Third is property damage. If the driver uh, or the owner of the vehicle's vehicle hits someone uh, and does damage uh, to another vehicle, does damage to signs, buildings, uh, et cetera, that will step in and pay for any damage that it causes. And last is comprehensive collision, which includes but isn't limited to covering repairs that don't result from a crash, like theft, vandalism, animal damage, fire damage, and more. Which one's most important? Uh, I recommend getting them all because then that way you have no gaps. Those gaps in coverage could result in thousands of dollars out of your pocket if your teen happens to cause a crash. If your teen driver causes an accident, keep in mind you're already paying 250% probably more uh, than an adult driver. It's going to go through the roof and you're going to have a very difficult time finding a carrier to insure your teen driver after an at-fault accident. If your teen does happen to get in a crash, here's some expert advice. First, have your child call you immediately. Second, stay at the scene. Do not move your vehicle and stay on scene. Third, take photos of the damage, any skid marks, people involved, witnesses, all to have as evidence. And fourth, do not post anything to social media. Now I know that this is a lot of information to take in, but what are some of the ways that you can save some money? We all like to save a buck whenever we can. Sign your teen up for driver's education. Get a better rate with multi-vehicle plans. You can also buy used cars with high safety ratings and also instill the importance of a clean driving record into your child. Now the only person that can speak from experience on this <laughs> as of right now is our own Erica. Yes. Uh, as you know, the rates go up a lot when you have yeah. a teen driver involved. absolutely but the driver's ed is huge my son did that and it just it's sort of a peace of mind for me personally I know my son's friends say that he drives like a grandmother well, that's oh, good. so there's a certain <laughs> level yeah. of safety this is where you kind of have to instill the fear because <laughs> yes. obviously yeah. they have you know you're giving them a deadly instrument to drive yes and that takes a lot of trust a lot of training but also a lot of responsibility yeah and I still tell him I was like I can't fully fall asleep until I know that you're home mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. Then I can actually, you know, breathe a little easier. Exactly. 